coming up on Breeze TV. Find out how some JMU students are standing up by sitting down. Plus, we head to the URAC kitchen to give your favorite comfort foods a healthy makeover. And stay tuned to see how to stay safe this spring break. From our JMU family to yours, this is Breeze TV. Live from the Allison B. Parker studio in the School of Media Arts and Design at James Madison University, this is Breeze TV. Good morning, JMU. I'm Sammy Crisitello. And I'm Maria Kuehler. Thanks for joining us today on Breeze TV. The University Health Center recently sent out an email addressing confirmed cases of the mumps. There have been several confirmed cases as well as cases pending investigation. Students who have been diagnosed or are suspected of having the virus have been referred to the Virginia Department of Health. The mumps are a contagious viral illness usually spread through sneezing, coughing, or contact with saliva. Symptoms include body aches, fever, and swollen salivary glands and usually appear 12 to 15 days after exposure. Students showing symptoms are asked to contact the, uni to contact the University Health Center. Two Confederate statues in Charlottesville are once again seeing the light of day. The statues of Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson were covered with tarps last August after one person was killed during the controversial Unite the Right rally. But city workers Wednesday removed the tarps under a judge's order. The judge said tourists, artists, and historians should be allowed to see the sculptures. Critics argue that the statues bring harm to the community. The Latino Student Alliance, in co-sponsorship with the Student Government Association Diversity Committee, held a sit-in on Friday on the Wilson Steps. Breeze TV's Alea McLean is live in the studio with more information. Thanks, Sammy. The purpose of the sit-in was to create an open forum for those willing to share their thoughts, feelings, and reactions to the circling news on DACA and CPS. Those attending wore black and all and sent set up solidarity to the event. Today, I, I hope we, we remember these two programs. I know that news circulates so quickly and so many different policies and different topics come up every single day. Um, and it feels like these two programs have faded in the background. And so we want students, faculty, and staff to know that um, these two programs are still very important. They do, you know, the uncertainty of these programs are jeopardizing the lives of many people in this country, and many of our own friends here at this institution. So we want people to remember that this is still a topic that we need to discuss and we need to um, keep it always in um, our mind. Mm -hmm. The group sat in silence for 45 minutes. Blank posters were provided for individuals to express themselves. President Trump announced in September that DACA would expire on March 5th. However, the Supreme Court Monday declined the Trump administration's request to hear the DACA case. Expect more updates in the weeks to come. Back to you, Sammy Maria. Students at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School returned to class on Wednesday, exactly two weeks since 17 students and faculty members were murdered inside the school. Teachers eased students back into their routine with a shortened four-hour class schedule. The school day began with 17 seconds of silence to remember those lost. I don't think that today was about being a student. I think today was more about being together, you know, being like feeling like you're not dealing with this by yourself. And in a symbol of perseverance, the school picked up right where it left off. They began with the same fourth period classes that came to a halt when shots rang out two weeks ago. Dick Sporting Goods is listening to the Parkland, Florida students. The sports retailer announced that it will stop selling assault-style weapons. The store will also raise the minimum age for all gun sales to 21. CEO Ed Stack says the company expects criticism from gun rights advocates as well as a loss of sales. We had meaningful conversations about this with our, our team, and we concluded that if these have to organize and do what they're doing, then we should be brave enough to take the stand, and that's what we've done. The Parkland shooter bought a gun from Dix in November of 2017. However, it was not the AR-15 that he used in the Parkland school shooting. Following the announcement Wednesday, Walmart also says it will only sell guns and ammo to those who are 21 and older. Donald Trump gathered top Democrats and Republicans to the White House Wednesday for an open discussion on gun policy. The move comes in wake of the Florida school shooting. 
The president emphasized his admiration for the NRA and the Second Amendment, but urged lawmakers to consider age limits. You have to look at the age of 21 for certain types of weapons. I mean, some people aren't going to like that, but you're going to have to look at that very seriously. And I think we're going to have a vote. I think it's going to be a very successful vote, and I will sign it. Trump also called on lawmakers to turn grief into action. He says a first step should be an agreement on stronger background checks and mental health reforms. Back at JMU a couple weeks ago, the Breeze TV reported on how people outside the JMU community are following students inside of their dorms after they swipe their jack cards. And since our last report, one student on campus has petitioned the administration to take measures to solidify security in residence hall. This week, I had the opportunity to speak with students involved in pushing this safety initiative. Shannon Smith formally started this petition after her friend encountered two intruders on her floor. My best friend, she's a sophomore, she lives in Chandler Hall, um, was unfortunately showering one night and a man watched her while she showered and she was able to get out of the bathroom and there was another man in her hallway and she quickly got to her room and called the JMU police. And after that happened, I was just like, how am I supposed to give her back what she lost? In an effort to do so, Smith urged the administration to implement safety precautions that several of JMU's peer universities have put in place. These include swipe access into staircases, elevators, and bathrooms in all residence halls. The petition received 1,000 signatures in a week and currently has about 1,500 supporters. JMU police has gotten in contact with a security team in D.C. who have worked all around the world with security, and they are currently doing an assessment of a hillside area because that is the most prone area to the intruders. Smith's petition has also enjoyed unyielding support from JMU Student Government Association. I think um, the JMU faculty and administration, they're beginning to realize that this is something that we're not going to back down from. We want to see dorm safety um, be improved at JMU's campus. While JMU prides itself on the friendly tradition of holding doors open, Hurt cautions that students need to be aware of just who they're letting in. I think um, as much as we want to believe that JMU is the safe haven where no harm goes wrong, um, that's just simply not the case. As the administration continues to examine substantive policy change, there are ample measures the student body should take in the meantime. This includes locking your doors and not letting anyone into your building if you don't know that they live there. If students see anything that's out of the ordinary, they should contact their residence advisors, hall director, campus police, or report the incident online via JMU's website. Coming up, UREC gives us a taste of healthy cooking in the kitchen. Plus, we'll take a look at how the brothers of Omega Psi Phi fraternity connect with their local African American history. This is Breeze TV. March is National Nutrition Month. Breeze TV's Aaliyah McLean gives us an inside look on ways UREC can help, can help you eat healthy. Not only does a university recreation center give students a space to physically stay healthy, UREC provides a variety of cooking classes to help educate students on the importance of eating well. It's basically to um, help create an awareness about nutrition. It's kind of the whole point of the wellness passport. Um, demonstrations. Every semester, UREC chooses different meals they want to help students prepare. These meals are all centered around eating healthy to help students eat out less and eat at home more. Like Danielle's class, which taught students on how to make a sushi burrito. Wouldn't be a wellness class without certain nutrition benefits. So basically I created this class um, so that there would be a healthy alternative for making regular burritos. Students were able to watch Danielle while she taught them how to make their own sushi burrito in this hands-on experience. Afterwards, they were even able to indulge in their handmade creation. So always try what you make. If students want to learn more about healthy eating, students can sign up for these wellness classes online at the University Recreation Center website. This has been Aaliyah McLean reporting for Breeze TV. The Student Government Association minor elections are being held today. In addition, there is a re-election for student body vice president. This is the result of an appeal that was made due to a system error that prevented freshmen from voting. SGA announced that there will not be a re-election for the presidential candidates. Jewel Hurt has been named student body president. Safe Rides held a drunk driving awareness event on Thursday in Madison Union Ballroom. 
Several speakers talked about their personal experiences with drunk driving and offered alcohol education classes. The nonprofit's mission is to create a safer JMU community by providing free rides for a JMU student that might be under the influence. And so this event was just a way to um, remind students that drunk driving is a real situation and that there are ways that we can prevent it. Um, it's as simple as calling someone else to come get you home who is sober or calling someone to get you home safely so that you don't have to walk home alone at night. Safe Rides operates on the weekends from 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. They take their last call at 3 a.m., but drive until all the people who have called them have made it safely home. JMU Libraries hosted a series of maker sprints yesterday at the JMU Costume Shop. At the beginning of each sprint, the participants were given a problem to solve, then had the rest of the time to create a solution. At the end of the three-hour sprint, each group presented their project to judges who selected winners and presented the prizes. The groups were judged on creative use of materials and how well they solved the problem. So this is the third one we've had this year. Uh, they are events designed to help people uh, think creatively, work collaboratively, uh, basically to solve a problem by making something. The Maker Sprints gave students the opportunity to get hands-on experience with a variety of technologies and to learn about the many resources available to them here on campus. An African American fraternity on campus is reconnecting with its history and traditions. Breeze TV's Jessica Newman has the scoop. Much of the African American history in Harrisonburg goes unrecognized. The Brothers of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated and the Northeast Neighborhood Association are attempting to change that. On Tuesday night in festival, a discussion followed a presentation about local African American history. The fraternity that held the event is one of the nine African American Greek organizations on campus. I think it's very important for representation um, for everyone that was not allowed to join the more traditional organizations of the past to be able to find somewhere where they can call it home. It could be difficult for minority students to find their voice at JMU. I would say more so when I first got here, I was more, I was like put into my shell, so I was very uncomfortable. And I stayed to myself, like I didn't want to talk in class, so I didn't want to speak my opinion. The brothers of Omega Sci-Fi had a special reason for hosting the event. We wanted to do this event because it's one Black History Month and one of our um, prior members actually helped to pioneer Black History Month and created it. The presentation focused on Rockingham County natives such as Lucy F. Sims, a former slave who went on to become one of the most influential educators in the area. Events like these give organizations the opportunity to have their voices heard. Uh, something for us, something that we can feel a part of, we feel we can uh, thrive through and work alongside other uh, persons of our distinctions. Reporting in Harrisonburg for Breeze TV, I'm Jessica Newman. Coming up next, Sarah's live in the Breeze TV Sports Wrap. Sarah, what do we got going on this week? We're going to take a look at the basketball teams wrapping up their regular season yes, and heading into the CAA tournament. Yeah. Well, one Play. team now brought home the trophy. We will have Kishuda more Jamie left. sports for you next on the Breeze TV Sports Wrap. This is Breeze TV. Welcome back to Breeze TV Sports Wrap. I'm Sarah Salzman, filling in for Kevin Rom. Coming off a close 90-84 to 84 win against Elon, the James Madison men's basketball team secures the ninth seed in CAA tournament, which is being held in Charleston, South Carolina. The Dukes will face off against Drexel in the first round for Saturday at 4 p.m. Whoever wins that game will go on to face the home team, the number one seed, College of Charleston. After a tough loss in double overtime against Drexel last Friday, the women's basketball team were hungry for a win at home against Delaware on Sunday. JMU started off with an early three-pointer um, from Haley Barron against the Blue Hens, um, put pressure, <laughs> good defense helped JMU lead 35 to 29 at the half. Maya Smalls led the Dukes in the second half, scoring 13 points and giving JMU breathing room. Dukes went on to win 67-56. JMU will end the regular season at home as they host William & Mary on Saturday. Seniors Haley Barron and Tasia Butler will be honored as the team looks to get their 20th win of the season. After the 8-5 loss in extra innings Friday night, the James Madison baseball team won its first home series on, of the season against Albany after picking up wins on Saturday and Sunday. 
the Dukes traveled to Richmond to face the Spiders on Wednesday. JMU got off to an early 3-0 lead on the first innings, but after seven innings, the score was tied at six. Harry Brown homered in the eighth to give JMU the lead at nine to six. Dukes got a total of four homo homers to finish 10 to six. For the first time in six years, JMU's women's swim and diving team took home the trophy after being in last place after the first day of competition. Diving coach John Walsh was honored as Diving Coach of the Year, followed by Dane Peterson, who was named CAA Coach of the Year. After a first place finish on the one meter board, sophomore Hope Byram was named Most Outstanding Diver of the Meet. Bonnie Zhang led the Dukes with three individual medals in the 50, 100, and 200 freestyle races. The Dukes ended the night with a second place finish in the 400 freestyle relay, putting the team in the lead with 656 points, beating the reigning champs William and Mary. The James Madison women's tennis team is off to an 8-0 start in the season, led by freshman Liz Norman, who was named CAA Player of the Week after going 3-1 on the weekend. The Dukes travel to Towson for a conference contest against the Tigers tonight. First serve is set at 6.45 p.m. The James Madison women's lacrosse team has started off the season hot with big win wins at home against UNC and Virginia Tech. After a close game against High Point, winning 13-11, the Dukes are now ranked second in the media poll. This is the first time since 2008 where the Dukes have held a top five ranking. The Dukes travel to Philadelphia to face Temple this afternoon at 2 p.m. Baseball welcomes Fordham to a three-game series at home this weekend. Both basketball teams will be on the road for a, short, for a shot to extend their season at 7-2. Men's tennis will travel to Orlando to play in five contests over the spring break. That was your JMU Sports for the Week, and now back to you, Sammy and Maria. Thanks, Sarah. Coming up after the break, we'll tell you everything you need to know to stay safe over spring break. More on that when we return. This is Breeze TV. Spring break is finally here, Dukes. While some students are spending their break hitting the beaches, some are traveling around the country to volunteer with alternative spring break programs. This program, at this program, JMU offers students the opportunity to spend their spring break traveling as well as doing volunteer work. ASB offers opportunities to go to national parks and popular tourist cities to serve, to serve those who are less privileged. This is a great program that you can get involved with and really connect your in-classroom learning to a service experience and make sure that as you're moving forward from JMU being a really active and engaged student here, you can also do that in the world past this campus. The program organizes 30 to 35 trips a year, spending 600 to seven, sending 600 to 700 students in total. They have opportunities to join in January and March, as well as some weekends and during the summer. With spending spring break just around the corner, the Health Center organized a safe spring break info table this past Tuesday. Our very own Katie Smith, the Breeze Director, is making her highly anticipated on-air debut in the studio to tell us how to steer clear of any potential problems on your spring break. Katie? Thanks, Sammy, for the kind words. Earlier this week, Bree TV visited some students at REACH to get tips on how to stay safe this spring break. Be an active bystander. If you see something, say something. Intervene if the situation is safe. Be prepared, have addresses, phone numbers, and transportation accessible at all times. Don't forget to keep your phone charged, too. Be informed, know the laws around town, and especially if you're going to a foreign city, be cautious. Be protected, and if you choose to participate in sexual activity, um, be protected. And lastly, be your best self. Respect others, ba boundaries, communities, and yourself. Now you know how to have fun and have a safe spring break. And for those who are about to hit the roads to head home, Harrisonburg is currently under a strong wind advisory, so be extra careful when you're on the roads. Back to you, Sammy. Hey, thanks, Katie. A popular ride, sh a popular ride share is ready to roll out its new service. Uber can help you get into your doctor's appointments. Every year, millions of Americans miss medical appointments because they don't have transportation. The missed appointments cost the medical system more than $150 billion a year, so Uber Health is partnering with healthcare providers to schedule rides for patients. So far, more than 100 healthcare organizations are on board, including hospitals, rehab centers, senior care facilities, and physical therapy centers. The CEO of the United States Olympics Committee is stepping down. 
The USOC announced Scott Blackman's resignation Wednesday. The USOC is dealing with the aftermath of the sexual abuse scandal of former USA Gymnastics medical coordinator Larry Nasser. Blackman, who has prostate cancer, cited health concerns for his exit. Suzanne Lyons, who is currently serves as a board member, will succeed Blackman until a replacement has been chosen to fulfill his position. Hollywood's biggest stars will gather once again this Sunday for the 90th Academy Awards. Jimmy Kimmel will host the event for the second year in a row. The Oscars will honor movies released in 2017. Nominations for Best Motion Picture range from the horror film Get Out to the romantic drama Call Me By Your Name. For four weeks, JMU's Mad For You has hosted Hoopin' with Ashley Hunter. Breeze TV's Katie Smith shows us one woman who has brought Hoopin' to the friendly city. And grab your hoop. Ashley Hunter could never get the hang of hula hooping. Then suddenly one day at a music festival, something clicked. This woman who had really big hoops and she let me borrow them. And I learned I could hula hoop for the first time and I got really excited. When you spend your whole life saying, I can't do this, I can't do this, and then all of a sudden you learn you can, it's just like a, it's kind of a dream. After the festival, Hunter wanted her own large hula hoop, but couldn't find one. So she took matters into her own hands. How to make a hula hoop online, and I just started, and then I had friends that were like, hey, could you make me one? Hey, could you make, it was a very, you know, I was not intending to own a business. It just kind of happened, and beautiful organic kind of thing. So Hunter started her own business, Friendly City Hoops. She makes her own hoops and teaches six-week classes at the beginner, intermediate, and advanced levels at the Lucy F. Sims Community Center. Left or right foot steps in, I rotate it to the center. Every Thursday night for the last four weeks, Hunter has brought her hoops to JMU in hopes to spread good vibes and teach students some hula tricks. Some of it was really challenging, so it was fun to try to like push myself and try new things. Behind. But it's like that fun challenge that I want to keep yeah, just no. practicing over and over until I get it. Although Hunter is done teaching classes here at JMU, she hopes to return to teach students how to make their own hoops and to spread her passion. Reporting for Breeze TV, I'm Katie Smith. And that's it for us today on Breeze TV. Also, we're wishing a very happy 22nd birthday to Sammy Cristicello. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sammy. Happy birthday to you. Have a great spring break, JMU. My awful singing skills right in the mic.